Hey, it's me, RJ, back again with another training lesson in working with Microvellum's solid modeling tools. If you've already watched the videos in the solid modeling tools training plan, then this will add a little bit more to what you've already learned. So if you want to follow along in Toolbox, open up a new project, and let's go. This is how I would build this office lobby desk using Microvellum and AutoCAD solid modeling tools. This is an actual product that I built in the past when working for another company, but it wasn't with the solid modeling tools. I did it the old fashioned way, but by using these, it makes the process so much easier and faster. Before starting, it is important to come up with a plan. Usually this plan looks like drawing the construction paths for each product to be built first, then the 2D section drawings with the necessary details. With the construction paths, think of each path being a different product. So if you need to build something that has different heights, more than one product needs to be added to this project. Once the plan view is updated and the construction paths are drawn, start detailing each section drawing. For this project, there's going to be three sections or products. Each section is drawn with all the parts I'll need along with the different construction methods. For this training session, I'll be showing how dowels and dados can be used for attachment. Obviously, I won't be using dowels and dados, but I can use the setting for dowels to get pre-drilled holes to make it as easy as possible for the ones assembling the parts. For this last section, showing the curved wall, I do have a support bracket showing that I will skip during this exercise, but I'll go over how to add that in another video. I went ahead and drew these other sections to try and show a clear picture of what needs to be built. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the side plant on. Now this product is very simple, just a standard wall construction with a face panel and a few attachment cleats. Those I'll be adding as supplemental parts. Let's go ahead and open up the solid modeling palette and start adding the products. It also helps when doing this to create a second viewport. This way I can have one side showing the 2D section drawings and the other, the construction paths and the 3D model. Now to add the products. I like to add all the products at the same time. So I'll continue to do that and assign a construction path to each one. With this first one, the side plant on, it does need to be off the ground but I'll show you how that's done after I get it drawn in 3D. All right, once all the products are there, I can start adding the vertical and extruded parts. It doesn't matter whether you select the extruded or vertical parts, just pick one and right click to add. As you've probably seen in other videos, I'll need to assign a smart layer to each part. Now all these layers hold properties and can be used on more than just one product or section drawing. For example, this wall stud layer will be used for each product because I want them all to be using the same properties. This join association will be applied to a construction path that has a break. And that's either a break along the same plane or when the polyline changes direction. If there aren't any breaks in the path, then the program will just use the max linear length of the extruded parts to determine where that joint occurs. Now keep setting up the smart layers and apply them to each part. On extruded parts that come into contact with a vertical entity, you can decide whether to have it apply machining. Now this should be set to true to get the dados and holes for construction. When it comes to these other objects that represent a dowel, or in this situation a screw hole, just go ahead and select skip entity for now. After the solids are created, I can go into the part and make more edits. And now for this wall stud, I can select the vertical dowel associates, and this will give me the pre drill holes to help with construction. Next up is changing the vertical position of this product. The product will automatically draw directly on top of the construction path, but if you want it to be higher or lower, you can adjust the base point vertical offset. You can also change the horizontal offset if you need to. This point here on the 2D section represents the product's base point. And now I'll add the 10.5 I need to to raise it up. Okay, because this is going on the side of the next product, I wanted to have a way it can be attached. This probably isn't going to be the way that most of you are going to do it, but the point is to show how additional parts can be added to the product when they can't be part of the 2D section drawing. I'm going to use the AutoCAD box command and make some attachment cleats. And because this isn't technically a microvellum product yet, you can use all the standard AutoCAD commands to get the parts in the correct location. After that's done, add them as supplemental parts. And these will also have smart layers, but they're not as smart as the other layers. Supplemental parts can't have properties for machining. Well, unless you use the AutoCAD 3D modeling commands, 
which is a whole other video. So for now, I'm just going to add the parts and imagine the shop driving some staples and screws into them. Okay, and now moving on. This is going to be the ADA section of the wall. The same as before, you'll need to assign smart layers to the parts in the section drawing. But this process is now a little bit faster because if smart layers with the properties are already there, they can be used again for this product. Now it's just a matter of assigning the correct layers. Now I think I have pointed this out before, but remember the section drawing is fully dynamic. By moving or changing something here will affect the 3D model. Now I'll add the dowels. And since I just did this, I'll just go ahead and fast forward and move on to using the extruded tools to modify the parts. I'm going to need to use the stretch tool to create this 4 inch section that wraps around the curved wall. But before I do that, I see I got a little height discrepancy. So if this happens, use the offset amount and the product to correct it. And this is because I added scribe to the floor on the outside panel. So if I adjust the vertical offset to negative 3 quarter, I'll be able to keep moving forward and detailing out the rest of this wall. This base point is telling you where the construction path is in relation to the section drawing. Then I can use the stretch and lock tool to extend the subtop and back panel over to cover this side plant on. Just like that. Now I wanted to show you something when a part is locked. So even though the section drawing is dynamic and changes will affect the 3D solid, that's only true if there are no locked parts. So I wanted to update the overhang on the front, but to do that, I have to unlock this part. And by doing that, it also means that I need to redo the stretch and lock because the product redrew. So remember this when going back to the section drawing and making changes. It could mean some extra work. Okay, now I'm gonna be adding some more supplemental parts. But for this portion, I wanna show you how you can use AutoCAD's modeling commands to make some modifications to those parts. Since there will be a cabinet here, I wanna first adjust the size of this access panel frame. I know it's not a frame now, but it will be. So to do this, I'll edit the offset amount in the smart layer. First, just checking the product that I already built, and I see that this needs to be 15 inches. Back into editing the part and updating that offset amount. And now to add the support for this top. Using the box command again, I'll make two outside leg panels, both three quarters of an inch thick. This first panel is gonna to need to have a corner notch on the back edge. So let me get this drawn, then I can work on that notch. It usually works best when you're in a conceptual or hidden lines view when using the 3D modeling commands. It just makes it easier to select the correct edge or face. Then since I need to also do this to the other side, I can just copy these parts and use them again over here. After a little work, using the same press pull command, the leg panels are ready to be added to the product. Now be sure to give them a unique name and a material from the library. And I can see here after the parts are unhidden that I actually didn't need to change the horizontal offset on that side plant on product. But no big deal, I can change that back. And the only extra work is going to be moving the attachment cleats back where they need to be. Oh, and also stretching the subtop and back panel again. Now finally, the last part of this video is adding the axis panel and cut out to this part. First is to draw a 2D rectangle matching the size of this part. To make this easy, go to the View tab in the AutoCAD ribbon and change the UCS to a different face. For this, I want Y to be up and down, not Z. So once it's showing that, just hit Enter to accept. Then draw the rectangle. After that, use the offset command for the cutout. I don't need to worry about adding radiuses to the corners because the router bit will do that on the machine. So now I can get rid of the area of that solid. After working on a part that's in a product like this, make sure that you lock it so redrawing doesn't revert it back. And then just repeat the steps again for the access panel. First offset, an eighth of an inch. Then this time I do want radius corners, so I'll use the fillet command and give each one of these corners a half inch radius. Then to make a 3D solid, but this time give it a value that will be the thickness of the part. Mine's going to be three quarter. 
So if this also gets analyzed properly, add it as a supplemental part and give it a name and material. Oh, and I almost forgot I have to get the cutouts and the studs to pass through the end panels. So quickly, I'll just use the press pull command again to get those cutouts. Highlight the area to be pushed or pulled, move the mouse in the correct direction, and select a point. And it can be any point, as long as it's past the thickness of the part. All right, well, this feels like a good stopping point. Be sure to come back and check out part two to see how this office lobby desk gets finished up with microvellum solid modeling tools. I'll see you there.